welcome back, friends. For today and the next few episodes, Sarah and I are continuing our conversation where we left off on uh, the heat of the summer, and it's analogy, at least in my mind, to that of the dark night of the soul. Mm-hmm. So if we were called the thesis statement that we've been kind of working off of, which is from Jeremiah, I have been deceived. So the we recall we were mulling over what happened to those beautiful gardens in January. Um, I suggested that gardens can be a type of a subplot to the big drama of our lives, which is who will I follow? Uh, which will I, which way will I take? What is truth? Gardening also demonstrates the application of the guideposts within Catholic philosophy, especially realistic epistemology and objective ethics. We're going to pick up um, helomorphic anthropology in this show. So we recall very briefly that realistic epistemology is a sign that man does have the capacity to be in touch with the world. Epistemology comes from two Greek words, two Greek words, episteme, knowledge, and logos, reason, word, or study, which taken together is the branch of study that concerns itself with how man knows something, what is happening in our minds when we know something. Realistic points to the certitude that man can be in touch with real things. A realistic epistemology says, I really am reading this blog. Mm-hmm. Without a realistic epistemology, we cannot have certitude of the real order of things, especially about the natural world and the soul, and thus we could not have truth. Objective ethics, we recall, is where the object and not the subject determines the rightness or wrongness of something. Objective ethics is one of accountability and accuracy. A subjective ethics is one where a person is not responsible for their acts. An objective accounting of ethics might have extenuating extenuating circumstances for acting, but it does not fully dismiss the person from the responsibility of knowing what is true or good. The object, the other person, by the subject, me, sets what I should do. Noted, uh, then we finally noted the many challenges the heat of summer poses and our perseverance in the garden falters. And in some cases, this might be compared to a dark night of the soul. That is where we left off with the prologue of St. John of the Cross. Right. You know, one of the things that you said there is that without a realistic epistemology that there wouldn't be truth. But I mean, obviously, truth does not require man to have a realistic epistemology. (laughs) Truth will always exist outside of that. Um, It's just going to be dependent upon whether or not man is is willing to engage with truth as it exists. And we know right now that that is not what's going on. Our our children really uh, are being preyed upon by an unrealistic epistemology, right? I mean, brains are literally being rewired right now um, to, and it's very interesting. I think that there is a, a, an analogy here between, you know, how people, um, particularly the saints, engage with this quote unquote dark night of the soul and almost what's going on now in the psyches of our of our youth and and some adults i mean i can't say that we're that our generation is is free and clear from this type of a delusion but really what we what we have is an unwillingness to engage with things as they are or to be to use our senses as they ought to be used right so that dark night of the soul it really is for for people who are experiencing it it really is an adamant ascent by those who make it through, I guess I should say. It really is an adamant ascent to give priority to the intellectual faculties of the brain that can know something to be true, even when the body isn't feeling it. 
Whereas now what we have going on is a, a denial of an absolute denial of that intellectual faculty that lets you know what is real and being totally driven by an emotional engagement with, I don't know, physical reality, right? But even in doing that, you see how terrible the trauma is to the human person when he tries to engage either like when you're when you're suffering from a spiritual dark night, it is traumatic, right? When there's a when there's not a, a connection between the mind and the and the body per se, right? There's a there's a trauma that's going on. Faith permits somebody to get through that dark night of the soul, right? Because they first ascend to truth and then they accept that their body may or may not agree with that. But now you have these poor kids and these adults who are almost intentionally driving themselves into this dark night of the soul with an unwillingness to engage in how you've described that, that realistic epistemology. And they're, I mean, I, to, to not put too fine a point on it, it's almost like they're driving themselves crazy intentionally. That's exactly right. And I'm glad you highlighted that, yes. Whether we actually make contact with truth or not, truth exists. Truth is out there, right? It's it's an other than. And uh, <laughs> those who do not ga engage in a realistic epistemology are saying you really can't know. You really yeah. can't know about yourself. You really can't know about that around you. And ultimately, what that means is you really can't know about God. Right. That that my friend, whether it's those who propose this or not, no, is right. always where it will end up. You right. really don't know about God. So then you can't really know if he, any of his attributes or, you know, it's on the level of opinion. And right. myth, myth. But, you know, what is really interesting about that, too, is just, you know, historically speaking, you know, the minute that man denies the reality of God, he, it is not very long before he's going to deny the reality of himself. Right, because man is who he is only in reference to God. Right. Well, man has no standing outside of, of the reality that God has chosen to put us into. And so the minute that we separate ourselves from his reality is the minute that our own crumbles. And we're really dreadfully seeing that now. And I, I'm sorry if I've taken you far afield. We'll return to our tiny garden. <laughs> no, no, that's fine, because you'll find... Uh we're going to be hitting those topics you brought up pretty hard here pretty quickly. Yeah. All right, my friends, let us stop there and pick up with the prologue of St. John. Um, Till the next time, be days. Idracio. Mm -hmm.